Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's project, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a rolling gate frame. It's gonna be about 16 feet long and about five and a half feet tall. We're gonna be using some two inch square tube, 063 wall thickness, which is about a 16th of an inch. Let's get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, I'm starting out with some 20 foot lengths of two inch square tube. Not something you don't see in my shop very often. You can see most of the stuff I have is cut at 10 foot lengths, but for this particular project, I needed 16 feet long. So. I managed to struggle them up on my truck and get a 20 footers uh, over to the shop. It wasn't pretty, but uh, I got it done. All right, you can see them over at the saw and making some cuts and it's taken almost my whole shop and everything I have just to turn these, uh, these 20 foot pieces around to get them cut. But it is what it is. This is the way I had to do it. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. You might hear my voice is a little crackly. I, I think I'm losing my voice a little bit, so. I forget. Uh, sorry about that. I just hope you be patient with me on that. All right, I'm over the evolution and I'm doing all the cuts that I have to do in order to make it happen. Cut and more cuts and more cuts. I got one, two, three, four, four pieces. I got some intermediate pieces and some length pieces in there as well. All right, once I got all the pieces cut, get over to the, uh, to the table start assembling now you can see that I've got my table extension on there this uh, like I said this this uh, particular frame is about five and a half feet wide it's uh, 16 feet long so I needed a little extra help uh, to get the width on it and I'm just kind of assembling things right here and cranking them down and I've got uh, the intermediate uh, pieces in there and a couple of pipe clamps and just getting everything uh, nice and lined up where they need to be and then I'm gonna go ahead and weld the corners and weld the intermediate pieces in you know now because it's a big project guys I don't if you're a fabricator don't be afraid to tackle this you know I mean whether it's a big gate or even a small gate it's all relevant you know um, uh, this thing here is uh, just because it's big doesn't really mean anything it's all the same and the nice rolling gate you'll see when this thing is complete it is pretty cool i'm telling you all right well since it's 16 feet long my gun lead is only 12 foot and i can't reach the end right there so i had to undo all the clamps slide it forward a little bit and then i was able to get on the very end and finish up the welding right there all right so now got that part of it done I'm going to check for square. That's the most important thing. Don't don't forget to check for square. And that's done diagonally like this. And to be sure that you're square in this case, I was right on the money. <clears throat> All right, these are the cross pieces right here. I'm putting these in because the uh, contractor is going to be screwing some 1x6 redwood dog-eared fence panels on here. And I'm trying to give them a, a couple of connecting points, uh, top, bottom, and in the middle right here so those boards don't warp over time. Like I said, that's something I'm not doing. Something the contractor's doing. My job is just to provide uh, the gate frame. All right, I'm operating off the HCP Pro Pulse 220 MTS here. This is my go-to machine. I've got several machines. I'm very fortunate to have that. HCP is a great uh, supporter of the channel. Now I've got uh, some 35,000 spooled up, and my gas is 90-10, 90% argon, 10% CO2. And I like to run, because this is 063, I like to run at about 250 inches a minute. Every machine's different, but that's a comfortable uh, rate for me on this, and it seems to work well. Reaching over the table and grabbing all the welds I can, I can get right here. Inside, outside, all the way around. Um, don't skimp. Be sure that you cover every angle and be sure everything is, gets filled. 
Uh, the downside of this, if you don't, is uh, rust could develop and come out of those uh, joints that aren't welded. So it is nice to be sure that you got everything completely sealed all the way around. All right, just finishing things up right here. I'll be sliding this thing down here. And just catching it up. All right. And I'm grinding my welds down. Cleaning them up. I got a Mercer flap disc on here, 60 grit. And uh, that seems to work the best for me. And I'm grinding down the welds that are going to be facing uh, all the corners, both sides of the corners, and both the interior sides as well because I want it perfectly flat when they go to screw the boards on. You know, sometimes I like that weld right there. It wasn't the prettiest. And uh, by, by grinding things down, you can clean things up a little bit. It's not absolutely perfect, but uh, it's a lot better than it was. And it just gives an overall better appearance. You know what? I mean, I, I like grinding. It's just, a, it's just a clean look. It's a clean finish. I've mentioned that several times in my videos, and it's just, uh, just a good look. Well, you can see that uh, the gate frame is starting to take shape, starting to look pretty good. All right, got all that part of it done. All right, so now that we got the, uh, the gate frame all welded and everything ground down, it's time to install some components, uh, which are going to be the wheels and the lock assembly here. Uh, and I want to I want to talk a little bit about these components right here. Uh, these here are wheels that are in a box right here. The box is roughly five inches wide, three inches deep, two inches wide, and it has a heavy duty wheel in here that has a bead that rolls on a piece of one inch angle iron. We're going to be doing that a little bit later on, and that's going to be attached to the concrete that I've already poured at this particular job site. Uh, and so these we're going to get two wheels, and they're going to be welded onto the bottom of the frame and I'll go over locations of where they're going to be welding on and explain why I've chosen what I have and I'll go over that a little bit later. Also uh, these rollers right here also I have pre-installed a U-type channel at the job site. Uh, we had to get that installed prior to pouring the concrete that's all done and then these rollers are going to be welded to that U and they're going to be sandwiching this gate right here and that's what's going to keep the gate from falling over when you slide it open and slide it closed that's what's going to hold the gate up and then we're going to be installing this lock box right here um, this is like a deadbolt type of lock uh, it has a key on on either side and then what happens is this thing here when you uh when you turn the latch it has this pin that comes down and locks. So what happens is when you slide the gate closed up against the post that I've already installed, uh, then you turn the key and the pin comes down and locks the gate securely into place. And that's what, uh, that's what we're gonna be installing. And actually, I'm not gonna be installing this just yet. Talk to the powder coater and they don't want me to install this because there might be some mechanisms and parts inside this that, uh, that are gonna melt. That The oven for the powder coater gets about 400 degrees. I'm not sure it was inside. We don't wanna ruin this lock box. So I'm gonna cut the opening for it and have it ready. And after powder coat, I will get this thing installed. Speaking of powder coat, these wheels come powder coated. And as you guys know, it's very difficult to weld over powder coat. As a matter of fact, it doesn't happen. It's a bad day. So before we, before we uh, install these wheels, I'm going to get the grinder and I'm going to grind around right here and take this down to bare metal so I've got a clean contact uh, with the wheel and the bottom of the frame right here. And as far as this, uh, after it's powder coated, unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do is when I get it back, I'm just going to have to grind around the edge and then clean this up right here, weld it in place, and then unfortunately I can't powder coat it back, but we're gonna touch it up with some matching color paint. It's just gonna be a small area. That's the way we're gonna have to get that dealt with. All right, so let me get the stuff out of the way, get these uh, boxes ground down, and uh, also too, we're gonna be taking these wheels out of the boxes. There are some bearings inside here. You can see these things are really heavy duty. They slide really well on here and we're gonna be taking these wheels out, 
I don't want to have the oven baking the bearings and stuff in here. Then we'll install the wheels uh, when we get it back here to the shop. If you guys are interested, if you guys want to know where I get all these components for my gates and stuff, this comes from kingmetals.com. You can go check them out. They've got a full catalog. they got facilities all over the United States right here. Um, it's a good company to buy this stuff from. So, All right, let's get this out of the way and get these wheels well done. All right, I'm just going to go to my toolbox right here. I'm going to open up a drawer and grab a pair of uh, adjustable wrenches. They happen to be right. In case you guys don't know, my last name is right. The convenience of it all. All right, so I'm just taking the wheels out right here. A couple of half inch bolts, uh, nut and bolts is all it takes to hold this on. And I'm going to set those aside for now and uh, go to, get over to the Burr King and start uh, taking off some of this powder coating and getting it down to the bare metal in the areas that I'm going to be welding on anyway. All right, just clamping them in place. Now I've got my gauge is 16 feet long. And so you have to have a happy medium for these wheels. You don't want to have them out on the very end and you don't want to have them too far in towards the middle. You just want to have a happy balancing medium uh, for your gate length. So mine is 16 feet. And I thought that 40 inches in on each side is a happy medium, and that's what I ended up with. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no uh, method to this. It's just uh, whatever you think is going to work um, uh, for a happy balancing um, situation, and that's what I came up with right here. All right, the box itself is fairly thin. It's uh, probably <clears throat> the same thickness as the tubing, 063. You can see I'm having to stitch weld everything in which isn't a problem. Sometimes it works uh, better that way. It's a nice cooler type of weld. I'm jumping around. So I've got that welded on the two boxes on that side and now I'm over to the lock box. I'm taking a hole saw and I'm gonna go ahead and drill an opening in here just a little bit larger than the opening uh, of the lock. And so that'll be all I can do for this side and I'll need to flip the gate around I got my daughter here. She's helping me flip this thing around. Kind of awkward by myself. And now I'm able to grab the, finish the welds on both sides. <clears throat> or both boxes, I should say, right here. And then I'll jump back over to the lock box. Because I've got a little bit more work on this side to do of the frame with the lock box. And then just grinding everything down here. Getting everything nice and smooth. And then that'll take care of that. All right, a little detailed work right here. Uh, the idea is to try to get this thing to fit as close or as tight as I possibly can. Um, because the box itself, the lock box, is smaller than the tubing here. I believe it's an inch and three quarters or an inch and five eighths one way and an inch and a half the other way. It is smaller. And so there's going to be a little bit of depression. It's not going to fit in there nice and flush. Uh, but it's okay because uh, there's going to be wood covering the outside of it. And so you're not going to really see that. All right. So a Mercer cutoff wheel right here. Very carefully cutting it out uh, a section of the frame. You know, I don't want to overcut anything here. I'm trying not to anyway. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make it as tight as I possibly can. That's the goal. I didn't want to have any big gaps in here. I didn't if I couldn't help it. So you can see that that is too tight and I'm just trimming up a little bit here. Not only once, not only twice, but three times before I was able to uh, get the box to fit in there. And that's kind of the way it's gonna go. I'm just kind of cleaning things up with, uh, with the file, getting all the burrs and stuff off of there. and everything fits in there the way I was hoping it would. All right, so now it's uh, time to move on to the track. And this is some one inch angle iron and uh, I'm gonna be welding these tabs on. 
Now these tabs are something that I cut out of my plasma table. I stock several different sizes of these tabs for different applications. Uh, this size right here uh, is about uh, two and a half inches uh, by a, about an inch and a quarter. This is the size I use for, for several different things. I've got all kinds of different sizes. I'm cranking them down here on the, <clears throat> on the welding table with the fixture clamps. And I'm welding these in about a half inch from either side. This is a three foot piece. I need 20. Uh, the other pieces are 10 foot long. This is a three foot piece. I need a total of 23 feet for this uh, for this gate. And I'm just uh, welding them in right here. <clears throat> All right, I got that one done. And now it's the 10 foot length. I'm just kind of repeating the same process right here of, uh, you know, a half inch in and um, two on either side like this and then in between I'm going to be going about every 22 I think it was 22 or 23 inches I'm going to have one on one side and one on the other side I'll be alternating sides of the track right here and I'm going to be anchoring this down to a concrete base that I have and that's what's going to hold the track in place You can see I've got this little jig. I made this jig a, a, a long time ago for another project, and I, I, the intent was just for a one-time a one-time deal. I hung on to it, and I use this thing all the time. You know, all kinds of different jigs and fixtures that you make for different projects. Hang on to all of those because you never know. You may not use them all the time, but uh, you know they come in handy. That's the case with this right here. I've used this thing several times on several different applications. All right, I'm just repeating the same process here for the other 10 footer. And I'm just getting everything uh, uh, welded out to get these uh, tracks complete. You might see that I'm not wearing a glove on that hand. You know, the reason for that is you can see how many times I'm moving around, moving with my fingers, uh, putting things on, clamping things down, grabbing the gun lead, putting the gun lead back. You know, and it's just, I just have to have that free hand. Could you imagine taking the glove on and off, on and off, on and off every time you're, you know, doing this? I don't know. It's just, that's what I do. I'm not saying you need to do it or it's the right thing to do, but it's just comfortable for me. That's why I, sometimes I don't wear a glove on that hand. All right. Got the gate back from the powder coater. There's just a couple things we need to do. And uh, one of them is I've got to uh, reinstall these wheels back in the, the bottom of the gate right here. And then also, weld in this lock box um, you know uh, the powder coater informed me uh, prior to taking this in may not be a good idea to have the lock box welded in there might be some parts within this box that uh, may not fare well in the 400 degree uh, powder coating oven so we elected to leave it out and uh, cut the opening here as you saw in the earlier in the video so now it's time to get this welded in and I ground down to the bare metal the areas on this lock box uh, that we're going to be welding and hopefully that's going to uh, have no problems when we weld this in you know welding paint or or powder coat it's just it's a bad day if you've never done it so I'm down to clean metal here and I want to show you what we did prior to go to powder coating to prep this gate uh, for the welding of the application I'm gonna bring you in and show you that and then we'll get this box welded in and get this uh, gate installed all right, so this is the area right here. Now, they've got this heat-resistant tape that they used, and I had them actually tape out right around the areas here on this side and on the bottom here that we're going to be welding in uh, so that we'd have no powder coating right here. And this is bare metal, and so it should have no problems. Uh, you know, we should have no problems welding this thing in place. And then after we get that done, uh, we'll get things cleaned up with a flap disc. And then I'll prime and paint this area. Now, I know that uh, it's not powder coat and what I'm putting back on is paint. I've notified the, the owner. The owner is fine with that. It is just going to be within this area right here. It's the same color, uh, but it's paint, not powder coat. And they're, they're okay with that. So let's go ahead and uh, get these wheels put on and get this box welded in. And we'll get this gate installed. All right, just reassembling everything back. Those bolts back in be sure those bearings are in place you can see how nicely those things spin super heavy duty wheels it can take a lot of weight this is not a very heavy gate and it's not going to be heavy after the wood is on but man super heavy duty all right here i go i'm going to go ahead and place this lock box in now, i've never done this before this is the first time i've ever done it like this so this is uh you guys are seeing it for the first time 
I'm not certain how it's going to go. I've got some shims in there, and I'm kind of tacking things in. Uh, remember, this box is smaller dimension than the than the outside frame itself, so it's not. It, you can see I've got a I've got a gap. It's a little recess down. The box is a little recess down in. Because it's all powder coated, I have no place to put the ground clamp, so that's why the ground clamp is right on right on top of the work I'm doing. And then uh, really thin material plus a big gap I'm trying to fill, so it's stitch welding pretty much all the way through on this application right here. This one here you can see was the biggest gap. Had two or three passes, two or three build up passes, and then fill in. And then I'm just going to grind this down the best as the best I can, the cleanest I can. Um, you know, wood is going to cover it, so it's not that important. The only thing that's going to be seen is the little round box, the little round key, key opening there. Everything else is going to be covered in wood. I got one more weld to put across here to finish uh, finish this in, and uh, this took some time. It's just I stitch weld all the way through this project right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward right here, and there it is. <laughs> I'm almost finished. It took some time. All right, just finished cleaning this thing up. We are almost, almost completed here. All right, I've painted it up. So the paint is pretty close to matching the powder coat. And like I said, again, it's going to be covered in wood. It's not that important, and it is protected. Fun little project right here. Uh, don't be afraid to do something like this, whether it be bigger or smaller. Uh, especially uh, rolling gates are a lot of fun on a track. And... Uh, it's a good clean job if you've got a nice RV uh, access and you've got the room for it as well. You can see that it slides real nice right here, real smooth. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope you learned something from it. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out our website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Rate, comment, and subscribe for more video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.